as we celebrate the life of Lincoln Brady and give thanks because God said, the word of God says, in everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. And we have in the first lesson and that will be taken from Psalm 90, verse 1 through 12. And this will be done by Abigail Wedderburn. Then we'll have a solo right after and this will be by Carly Morgan. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. So the first lesson is taken from Psalms 90, verses 1 to 12. And it reads, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. All thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but troubled and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Twelve and last. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I must say condolences to the Brady family on behalf of the Morgans. And I just wish us show that God is with you. Bless the Lord. Precious Lord, take my hands and lead me on. Let me stand for I am tired. Thank you, Miss 
Brother Burn for that beautiful song. Precious Lord, take my hand. We now have the second lesson, and this will be taken from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, and this will be done by is it Rudolph Brady. first lesson, second lesson is taken from Revelation 1, verse 4, 2 to verse 8. Here begin it. And to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us kings and queens and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eyes shall see him, and they also which perceive him, and all kindreds of earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Eighth and final. And I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Say, Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Yeah, in the, the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask the worship team to come again as we do this song, Oh Great the Art. And then we'll have a reading by Tamari Brady. Lord my God, when I lost to wonder, thoughts in the road, the world thy hands has made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. We 
shout of acclamation and shake me home. What joy shall fill my heart? And I shall walk in humble adoration and there proclaim. and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 1. Death will defeat you. If the grave could talk, what would it say? We all have a common denominator. We will die. I will die. You will die. It will happen one day. Death will defeat you. You won't be able to dodge it. You won't be able to sidestep it, trick it, or make it disappear. Some of us have many years in front of us. Some of us are staring death in the eyes. Kind of morbid, but we all think about death, don't we? Are you scared of it? Do you worry about dying? Do you have that nightmare where you wake up just before your life ends? It's natural. There is a beginning and an end into physical life. I hate defeat. I hate waving the white flag. I don't want to lose. And I bet you don't enjoy it either. Is that what death is? If the grave could talk, it would say, Death will defeat you. But then there is Jesus, the man who defeated the grave. Jesus stood toe to toe with the grave and defeated death. Death is beneath him. Jesus redefined what the grave would say. When Jesus talks, the grave speaks. Jesus' grave gives each <clears throat> and every one of us hope. He tells us that death doesn't have to defeat us if we have a relationship with him. He tells us that we won't lose. Jesus is the ultimate champion. We follow the savior who defied death and the grave. His grave says, death will not have the final word. Prayer, Jesus, help me believe and trust that you have conquered the grave. I don't want to be afraid of death. I want to believe in the savior of the world who conquered death. Um, Mark Lincoln Brady was born December 1st, uh, 1972. Mark has always been a very quiet person, private, secretive person. And there is not a lot that even his closest family members and friends know about his life. 
he grew up in St. Mary, Belfield, St. Mary, and went to school there until he came back to Kingston. And um, he went to Edith Dalton James, and then he went to Stats. And after that, his life was a big secret. And this morning, I believe that, you know, there's something that the Lord wants me to say. I'm not sure to who or it might be to everyone. It might be for someone. But, you know, when I first heard that Mark died, my head felt like this, you know, when you're blowing air in the balloon, I just, you see it getting bigger. That's how I felt. And then after that, I said to myself, I wonder if he knew he was going to die. Did he have an opportunity to say, Lord, have mercy? And I also thought about <clears throat> the scripture in Luke 15 with the prodigal son. And a lot of us, all of us probably know that story. We're familiar with it. But I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't believe I need to talk about the son. I want to talk about the father this morning. A lot is not said about the father. But if you read the scripture, it said that, Every day after the son left, took all that he was going to get from his dad. The father went and look, kept looking for him and waiting for him. Eventually, the son came back home and the father ran and met him. Now, if we recall the story, that boy was actually living with the pigs. He was taking care of and eating the food. So, you know, he probably smelled bad. But the father didn't care. He was more interested in welcoming his son and this morning what i want to you know encourage all of us before we get to the point where somebody is thinking oh my god did he or did she have a chance to say lord have mercy we are here mark is no longer here unfortunately but we are here and the Lord wants us back. He is waiting with open arms like that prodigal son. The, the, the father didn't say, boy, go, go wash off the hog smell off of you and um, brush out the hog food out of your mouth before you come near me or anything. The, dad, the word of God said the father ran and met him and kissed him. You and I know we probably wouldn't, that he would have to go take a shower, the servants hose him down. And this morning what I'm trying to say is that God doesn't care how we look, how we smell, where we're at, what he's concerned about is our soul and what we are doing with it. And he is waiting. He's not even counting or adding up our sins. And I'm not just talking to people who are not saved because the word of God said we sin in words, in thought, and in deed. So I'm talking even to Christians, people who have known the Lord and have, and have backslidden. He's waiting to welcome you. So I'm just encouraging those of you who do not know him, those who have backslidden Christians, all of us, to be cognizant of the fact that we need to be in repentance daily. So um, I appreciate all of you coming and just being patient and listening to my few words. I'm not the one bringing the word Pastor Nelson is, but I felt that I just needed to point out to all of us that God, this is God giving us a chance again. We are here because God is giving us a chance, an opportunity to say, Lord, have mercy. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Debbie, Deborah, for sharing. Now I have a minister item from the worship team. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Praise Again, God. you know, the song said, oh, what a sunrise it's going to be. He said, death will lose his sting this morning and the grave, the victory. He said, the silence will be broken and the storm cloud rolls away. I hear the saints and angels singing on that homecoming day. This is in 1 Corinthians 15, say, oh, death, there is your sting. Oh, grave, where is your victory? This morning, just know that, you know, if you open up your mouth and say, Father, forgive me. Just let the teeth of the cross. He said, today you'll be in paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Ah, give life. And he takes 
He takes it away. He is the potter, and I, I am the clay. When I feel the last sunset and cross over the sea, I hear the saints and angels singing. On a whole coming day. Oh, what a sunrise is going to be. Death will lose its name, and the grave is free.
to a setting like this we should always be more reflective and think about our own mortality sometimes some of us feel as if we're going to be here forever and we feel so powerful but a time will come when we will all have to go. I've never met Mark Lincoln Brady, but I, I know his sister quite well. I'm not sure if the same for some of you. Maybe you have connections some way, somehow. But I realize the gathering is not one of those large gatherings where you find churches full and all the seats taken. Deborah said he was very private. Very private. To reflect. In and amidst grief. It's a time of reflection. In St. John chapter 11, the Word of God shares with us a story about Jesus Christ losing one of his friends, close friend. In fact, verse 1 says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and Martha, his sisters. And while Lazarus was sick, Jesus got wind of it. And somehow he delayed his going. The word of God said he didn't leave where he was until maybe two days later. And when he got there, it was over four days that Lazarus passed. Verse 17 of chapter 11 says, Then when Jesus came, he found that he was laying in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. And Martha, as soon as he heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And those words by Martha 
really carried some weight. We hear the painful words of Martha as she confronts Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so many times when we lose a loved one, we may say to the doctor, if you had moved, moved quick enough. We may say to another family member, if you do what you should have done, maybe he wouldn't have passed. My brother would still be alive. And it, this is a time where sometimes people in their grief, in their moment of grief, they try to blame someone else for the passing of a loved one. These words echo the cries of countless hearts throughout history, pleading with the divine in the moments of anguish and loss. Today, let us reflect on the profound meaning behind Martha's statement and discover the enduring lesson that it holds for us. Martyr words reveal the depths of our faith in Jesus Christ. Despite her brother's death, Martha clings to the belief that Jesus could have prevented it if he was present. You see, her statement was not an accusation, but an expression of trust in the power of Jesus Christ to restore life. In our own lives, when faced with trials and tribulations, do we maintain this unwavering trust in God's plan? Even when it seems unfortunate, even when it seems difficult, even when it's painful. Yes, a loved one has been taken away from us, but can we still trust God? Yes, we're hurting with pain and we wonder why God had to take Mark away at this time. Based on our human understanding and calendar, he would have many more useful years. And we can question God. How many times do we question God when something happened and we say, God, why? And we blame. But we must realize that in everything, God is a purpose. In our pain, in our grief, in our anguish, sometimes we don't see it. We can't appreciate it. But God is doing something in it. Martyr's words underscore the human tendency to question divine timing. We often find ourselves... Grappling with the mystery of why certain events unfold like they do. Like Martha, we may wonder why God allows suffering and sorrow to touch our lives. Have you ever asked the question? Have you ever asked God question why? And it's okay. It's okay to question God. We're humans and we don't understand everything. But many times we say, why? And not willing at times to accept what God is saying and what God is doing. Could it be that Mark came on this earth for a purpose? And purpose has been accomplished. And God is saying, it's time to go. My friends, we all have a mission. We all have a purpose. Maybe your friends and family don't understand the time in it. Don't understand the when. But when you come on this stage of life and you play your role, it's like a movie. You get a part to play. 
And when that part is finished, you don't see that character in the movie again. We're on the stage of life. And God calls us all to be here for a purpose. My friends, I want to remind us this morning that life is short. We're not here to stay forever. No matter how you look young and strong and buff and have all the muscles. And you might be pumping irons and you go to the gym and the physique look well. There's timing in all of that. No matter how the ladies, you might well tone and you're shaped like the Coca-Cola bottle and look well in all dimension. Time is in all of that. Let us use the time wisely. What God has given us. Martha's words foreshadow the miraculous resurrection of our brother Lazarus. Despite her initial doubts, Jesus demonstrated his power over death by calling Lazarus forth from the tomb. Jesus Christ is a resurrection in the life. If we read further in the passage, after everything was delayed and he was buried and someone says, by now he stinketh. But Jesus Christ is a resurrection and a life. He went to the grave and he called and he says, Lazarus, comfort. I want to remind us today that the grave is not the final resting place. Jesus Christ has the power to call us from that grave. And every man will be called from that grave because we all have to give an account before God. And no matter what they do to the remains after the breath comes out of the body, we're still going to be called for it. Today we're looking on a little jar with some ash. And that is representing our brother Mark. That is representing the man that you knew. But tell us something, that jar, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is a resurrection in life. And one day he's going to say, Mark, come forth. Because we all have to stand before God. Martyr's word challenge us. To cultivate a deeper faith that transcends our circumstances. Just as Jesus assured Martha that her brother would rise again, so too he offers to us that hope of eternal life. My friends, life is a journey. Reflect on your life. Are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you embracing the journey that God has called you on? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? Why was I born? What God wants me to do in this life? Maybe we need all to find out what is our mission let us embrace Martha's words as a reminder to trust in God's timing. Even when it seems contrary to our desires. May we cultivate a faith that perseveres through trials. Knowing that Jesus is always present with us. Offering comfort strength, and ultimately, eternal life. Martha questioned Jesus and says, if you had been here, my brother would not die. But in the long run, she trusts him. She trusts his timing. She trusts his hand. And I encourage us this morning to trust God's timing I'm not sure if Mark has children, but all his loved ones, I'm encouraging you to trust God's timing. He's the one who gave life, and he can also take life. He's the one who has placed us on this earth, and he knows 
our beginning and our end. We don't know. None of us know if the next Thanksgiving service or funeral service as it, as it may, will it be yours? Will it be mine? Who is next? Who is next? God has a timing in everything. And whatever God do, whatever he does, it is well done. And we entrust Mark in God's hand. It's not for us to judge where he's at. We trust him in God's hand. Could we stand our feet? As we humble our hearts before God, this blessed day, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this privilege. We thank you, precious Savior, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, that we are in the land of the living and we're here to celebrate Mark's life. But God, we're so conscious of the fact that he's just gone on ahead before us. And one day, one of us will follow on. So Father, we pray today that our hearts will be at the right place. Our mind, our attitude will be at the right place. And Father, I'm praying today that if any person that is in the hearing of my voice do not know you as Lord and Savior, Lord God, out of this, they too will make a commitment to serve you, a commitment to walk with you, O oh God. Father, we pray that you will continue to comfort hearts, comfort minds, and comfort spirit. And Father, we say thank you for all that you have done because, Lord, what you do is well done in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing the closing hymn in our program. My hope is built on nothing less, praise God, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet and spring. Oh, Lord, 
us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. God bless you brethren. Thanks for celebrating with us. Thanks for giving thanks for the life of Mark. God bless you richly. There will be refreshment served around the back area so you're all welcome to partake and participate in the thanksgiving of this life thank you again for supporting the family thanks for being here god bless you